Hi guys and welcome to this week's Shaw Academy Nutrition Blog. Today I'm going to take you through the tricky subject of protein powders. Now why would we choose a protein powder supplement over whole protein foods? Well firstly it's far more convenient. It's free of other macronutrients which means it doesn't contain any carbohydrates or fat so it may be therefore lower in calories. And some people may choose to use protein powders to supplement a high protein diet. So if they are aiming for high protein intakes and they can't do so just by a uh, true intake of food, they then may choose to supplement their diets with a protein powder. Now on the flip side, protein powders are expensive and it may not be necessary for the individual to be in consuming them as they may get enough through their diet anyway. And also remember that just because it's a protein powder, it doesn't mean that it's better than the protein that we can get from whole foods. Now, there are several different sources of protein powders because all protein powders will come from some kind of a food. So we have several ones and we have the main kind of most popular ones here to show you now. So first of all, we've whey protein. It is probably the most popular protein powder out there. It has an amino acid profile particularly suited to muscle building, so it's very popular with, the, with bodybuilders and weightlifters. It's very quickly absorbed in our systems and it's very suited for a post-workout protein snack. We then have casein protein. It's also very popular um, and it's very well known as well. Now, casein protein is digested slightly slower, okay? So it's, go it's, good. it's a good source of protein for a sustained release. Now, it's a good general use protein as well, so probably better for taking throughout the day or before you go to bed. We then have soy protein. So, soy protein is a complete protein, so it also stimulates muscle growth. However, some components of soy protein may skew hormones. We then have egg protein. Egg protein has fantastic bioavailability, so it's readily absorbed into our system. It also stimulates muscle growth, and it also has a sustained release of protein. So a good, again, a good general use protein. Hemp protein. Hemp protein is brilliant because it also may contain good levels of omega-3 fatty acids. It's easily digested. However, we have to remember that because it has good levels of omega-3 fatty acids, it may have a higher calorie content than other protein powders. Lastly, then, we have pea protein. So it's 100% plant-based, so very good for vegan individuals out there. However, it does have an incomplete amino acid profile, so it's probably not as effective as other protein powders. So not only do we have sources of protein, but we also have different extraction methods. Now, these extraction methods, they mainly relate to whey protein, so you'll have hydrolyzed and isolate whey protein. Now, first of all, hydrolyzed protein, I have to say it is more expensive than just regular whey, concentrate whey. Now, basically, the protein has been broken down into smaller groups of amino acids. It is then thought that it is more readily absorbed uh, when it is broken down into these smaller groups. Secondly, we have isolate, okay? Now, these, this isolate whey protein actually contains a higher percentage of pure protein. And it, it actually also may be pure enough to be virtually lactose, carbohydrate, and fat free. It is quickly absorbed and it has a high concentration of branch chain amino acids. So in conclusion, the best advice is to start simple if you are considering including a protein powder in your diet. Remember, whey is probably the best value for money and it's very effective. Always research your suppliers, research your manufacturing processes, and remember that results do take time. So be patient if you're thinking about including a protein powder in your diet. Well, that's all for this week's nutrition vlog, folks. I do hope you've enjoyed it. See you all back here again. Thank you.